so I am led to Venice once again. Egregio Signor. Britain's 1973 opera is about the writer Gustav von Aschenbach. Uh, the story is very simple. Aschenbach has got writer's block and he can't really manage to produce any new work, even though he's Germany's most famous writer. So he goes to Venice to recuperate and to try and find some inspiration. While he's there, he sees a family walk past in the hotel. Uh, amongst the family, there is a, a youth. He's not entirely sure if it's a boy or a girl at first and he becomes hugely inspired by the beauty of what turns out to be this young Polish man called Tadzio. I always get asked about the music in Death in Venice because of course we can't really discuss Death in Venice as a theatre piece without discussing the 1971 movie by Lucchino Visconti. Visconti used Mahler uh, to set up the beautiful and enigmatic city of Venice in a soundscape. Benjamin Britten's opera does very much the same thing. This is his last opera, it's his last really hugely great work, and it was written on a very big and grand scale. It's also very intimate in very many areas, and the music reflects that. I love doing Benjamin Britten, I've done his operas many times. Uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, also with Stuart Bedford, uh, Peter Grimes, uh, The Rape of Lucretia. They all present similar and different challenges because Britain demands not only a musicality, uh, he demands a theatricality, and he also demands, I think, a great humanity to come through the pieces. In this, again, he's writing about the individual, but he's writing, interestingly, at the end of his, his career, in very nearly the end of his life, he's writing about the artist as an artist himself. Where does this, the artist get the inspiration? Is the inspiration given or do you search it out? And in this, von Aschenbach goes searching for beauty. He goes searching for this youth that's maybe his own lost youth. When the piece was uh, first written, uh, it's set in 1911, it was translated immediately into many languages um, and it became a worldwide hit. The question really for me is, is this a piece that is sexually driven as we would see it today in 2014-15? Or is this a piece that discusses the very nature of the beauty of art? What art is, what art can be, and what art is objectively? Um, the answers, I think, actually are with you, the people that are watching. So come and see, see what you make of it.